Okay, we're doing one-to-one -one and inverse functions. A one-to-one -one function is, this is the book's definition of it, um, no two elements in the domain correspond to the same element in the range. And then they give you this, if x1 does not equal x2, then for it to be one-to-one, -one, f of x1 cannot equal f of x2. Basically all this means, you know how in order for it to be a function, you can't have the same x values. Well, in order to be a one-to-one -one function, it can't have the same x values or the same y values. Um, so if you're looking at points, pause it. Okay, I got three quick examples here. So in this first example, A, because these have the same y va or x values there, that means that this one is not a function. From what we had said before. Well, this one, all my, the, in B, all my x values are different, but I have two y values that are the same. So this is a function but not one to one. And then C None of the x values are the same. None of the y values are the same. So this is a one-to-one -one function. Okay, I'm going to have three graphs here. And we're going to look at them to see if they're functions, one-to-one -one functions, or a function but not one to one. Okay, so for this first one, in order to tell whether it's a function or not, you can do the vertical line test. Remember? Since this hits the line more than once, then it's not a function. Okay, well this one, no vertical line will pass through and hit the line more than once. So this is a function, but in order to tell Hold on. We use the vertical line test to tell whether it's a function or not. We can use the horizontal line test to tell whether it's one to one. If it passes both, then it's one to one. So for this second one, it is a function, but if I do the vertical line test, it hits it twice, which means that it's not one-to-one. -one. And the third one, I can draw any vertical line or any horizontal line, and it's only hitting the graph once each time. So this is one to one. So generally, if it passes both the vertical line test and the horizontal line test, it is one to one. Okay, so inverse functions. Inverse functions are where the domain and the range are switched, basically. So if I have this function, h of x, and it has three points in h of x, negative 1, 0, 
1, 2, and 3, 4. The inverse of h of x which is denoted h raised to the negative 1 or h raised to the negative 1 x is going to have the points 0, negative 1, 2, 1, and 4, 3. Basically the x and the y's switch. The x is the input, the y is the output. The input and output flip-flop. So if you're given a function f of x equals square root of x plus 2, you can find the inverse by first I'm just gonna switching x and y then solving for y so this is really y equals square root of x plus 2 so I switch the x and y and I get x equals the square root of y plus 2 and then solve well to get rid of the square root I'm going to do the inverse operation which is to square it so then I have x squared is equal to y plus 2 and then subtract 2 from both sides and I'm left with y equals x squared minus 2. If I'm looking for the domain and range of each function so I have f of x first my domain is going to be x is greater than or equal to negative 2 which means from negative 2 to infinity my range since this graph wouldn't have been shifted up or down from the parent function the parent function looks like this and this graph isn't shifted up or down so the range is going to be the same as that parent function which is from 0 to infinity I forgot the brackets on the two on the last one so I'm going to go change that so it's from negative 2 including negative 2 to infinity and then from 0 to infinity well to find the domain and range of the inverse now I'm looking at this one and that's a quadratic so the domain and range are going to be similar to the quadratic okay well the domain is still going to be all real numbers alright I'm going to change that I still got to figure out how to edit some of these videos so I'm going to make it easy. The, to find the domain and range of the inverse, switch the domain and range from the f of x function. So the range comes here, the domain goes there for the inverse. So I have from 0 to infinity and from negative into 2 to infinity. If you have two functions, f of x and g of x, just like you did in the last assignment, if you find f of g of x and that's equal to x,
then F and G are inverses of each other. It goes both ways. So it also works if you do g of f of x. And that should equal x as well. If it doesn't, then they're not inverses. So if I want to verify that these two functions are inverses of each other, I can try using the composite functions f of g of x. Let's try that one first. If I plug the g function into the f, so I have 1 half, but instead of x, I'm going to use 2x plus 4 minus 2. And when I simplify it and distribute that 1 half, 1 half times 2x becomes x. 1 half times 4 is 2, minus 2, that becomes x. So because it became x, that means that they're inverses of each other. You could have done it this way as well. g of f of x. So I have 2 times 1 half x minus 2. plus 4. When I distribute the 2, that becomes 1x minus 4 plus 4. The 4's cancel out. I'm left with x. Okay, here are the three you try problems. Um, we'll go over them first thing in class. I got a joke for you this time. Would the zero say the eight? Hey man, nice belt. <laughs>